So welcome back. A sunny but cold Monday morning here at Jean de la Grange. And what we're doing today is looking at some more positive therapy, mindful moment techniques. So I'm going to do the same as last time and put some images up for you to look at while we talk. OK, here we go. Seem unable to do two things at once. I can certainly find how to screen share, but whether or not while I'm screen sharing, I can talk to you. I can't. So there we are. Here, more doses of positive therapy and hopefully some inspirational photos, things to distract you as we go through as well. So from the last video, we're very much feeling like it's springtime here. It's no longer signs of spring. There are spring blossoming all around us. And so try to find a minute or two every day to find something positive about the season, something that's connected with the season that you're in that makes you feel that positivity. I'm very aware that we're in spring in the northern hemisphere, but that that's different if you're in the southern hemisphere where you would be thinking about autumn and fall. At the moment here, there are occasional warm moments where the sun comes out and I think, oh, that's that that's summer on the way. And we have scented hyacinths in the garden, which is a pleasure. Um, and I'm glad they're there. So that technique that we know of with positive psychology, positive therapy about Actually, it's OK. There's something good there. I'm feeling positive. I've got that gratitude, which is a word you hear a lot around this technique. I'm glad they're there. I've got that gratitude today. And there might be other things that I'd rather were not happening, but I'm glad for the warmth of the sun and the flowers today. So there we are. That's the first thing to think about is just remembering about that that little bit of gratitude, that little bit of thankfulness. OK, right. Moving on. So ideas to focus. Um, there are times when we feel frazzled or agitated. There's all sorts of different words for this, but we we're not feeling ourselves. Our attention might uh, northern expression again from the north of England. My attention's all over the place. Um, we need to focus, but we can't. It's just too difficult. And it's those times that we're thinking about today. So there's an image for you of a sort of stormy sea and a, a sky with clouds in it, all sorts of things happening. We're just not focusing. It's a difficult day. Another one there that I felt was a good image for I'm finding it difficult to concentrate. My concentration just isn't there. The other thing that we're thinking about today, because we, we might be having a morning when we're concentrating, everything's going well, something happens and we react. That reactivity. Now, Viktor Frankl, who's one of those people that you just can't help but admire in um, their writing and, and what happened to them in life, um, wrote this sentence here, which I'll read out. Between the stimulus, between something happening and the response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. So we can choose how we respond. Split second, but we have the, the power, the ability to choose how we respond. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. So it may well be that something happens and I'm feeling a little bit bad tempered and I want to say something sarcastic. But in that moment, I can choose not to do that. I don't always. Cynicism and sarcasm is something that, you know, I, I don't think I'll ever give up, but I can choose. I can look at the other person, I can think and I can say something different. 
More importantly, and, and what we're focusing on today, is I can more or less tell my body, tell my mind, it's okay. Cool it, calm down. You don't need to react to that. It really isn't important. Okay. So reactivity, reacting. When our attention's been broken and we're starting to react, what's there? Well, the first thing is our attention. Our attention just gets hijacked, off it goes. It's it's channeled onto something else. And it's almost as though that's happening and we don't have control. Somebody doesn't smile at us or somebody says something that is a little bit thoughtless. We, we focus on that straight away. And then there's our reaction in our mind, in our body, that fight flight revving up um, quite subconsciously. So that's there. And whether you call it tetchiness or irritation or anger or whatever word you choose, it starts to feel or even irritation is quite a good one. And your mind is wandering. You know, you're no longer focusing on what you were doing. Your mind's wandering. So three things there that are part of reactivity. So anxiety or fear. They can creep in. Um, and I know that for some people that can happen when they feel very relaxed. There's nothing at all that seems to have happened. You're feeling OK. And all of a sudden there's a feeling of of anxiety or fear creeping in. And it's that don't panic. And there's a lovely expression in French, which I, I will share with you because I love it, which is pas de panique. No panic. Pas de panique. Don't panic. And it is much more about panicking mindfully because we can't help whether or not we're feeling anxious, whether we're going to panic or not. So let, let's just assume that we're going to feel some anxiety, but we're going to apply mindfulness to it. We're going to panic mindfully. OK. Um, when you don't do that, we're almost this expression I read yesterday, living life in reverse. You're planning for what might happen rather than building on what's happening, what's happening at that point in time. And I'm going to share something which made me smile, which are the Mr. Men books. And we're going to look at Mr. Jelly, um, who can become. Let me just move that up there so that you can see an inefficient, quivering wreck who's close to burnout. So let's have a little look at Mr. Mr. Jelly. There he is. Can move that across to the other side so you can see him. Mr. Jelly was frightened of everything and anything. At the slightest little thing, he would quiver and tremble and shake and turn into jelly. He was nervous of everything and everybody. It might be it was a falling leaf, it might be a twig that was snapped. And for Mr. Jelly, Oh, calamity. That just channeled him, you know, his, his attention, his thinking. He went off into that pattern of reactivity. So that's a good image to have and to remember is Mr. Jelly. I love Mr. Jelly. So there we go. Restlessness, shattered focus. Um, I'll leave that there for a second or two for you to look at those those images and think about how you feel when you're restless and you've got that shattered focus, your attention's gone for that moment in time. And you almost feel your attention, your concentration, your focus is draining down the sink, draining down the plug hole, draining away. So practical ideas, um, self-soothing skills, um, self-regulation is another word that we hear for that. And so what we're doing today is, again, maximising visual thinking. Um, not doing this today, but can do is actually music, auditory, huge, great, big reaction, um, dampening down music, rhythm, 
um, from the, the thinking hemisphere of the brain to the hemisphere, the right hemisphere of the brain, where music, rhythm, we know that they're, 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 they're centred in that hemisphere. Uh, music, music can be great at, at, at calming things down. And we're going to think quite a lot today about something called fixed gaze meditation and how we can use these techniques to just help us with reactivity. And when we don't, we feel drained. So what can we do about replenishing our energy levels? I think I've planned too much today. We may not even get through it, but let's see how we go. So the first technique to share with you is that fixed gaze mindfulness. We did a little bit of this last time where we talked about looking at objects and focusing on objects. And I put yeah, an easy chair, um, some dried flowers, some letters and the candle because the candle flame, the candle flame is great because it flickers, but it's also there in the same place and static. So it's a good one to have a fixed gaze, mindful meditation. Um, the aim is to focus attention on a particular experience or object and be fully aware of this. So. In mindfulness, that could be your breath. We could be focusing on our breath. But today we're not. We're actually going to choose an object and focus on that. And the, the one I've shared there is a paperweight with, with a glass pattern in it. Um, it's not my paperweight, but my daughter many, many years ago bought me a paperweight. One of those almost like Venetian glass with a beautiful pattern in it. And I used to keep that on my desk. The idea being that if, you know, if I needed to, I could just veer away from the very difficult phone call that I was having or the very difficult piece of work that I was doing. And I could just spend some time looking at that paperweight. So, you know, if you're not somebody who looks at candle flames, something like a very simple glass paperweight can be an alternative. You seem to be able to find them in charity shops in England, certainly very, very cheaply indeed. So let's move that across. And there we go. So objects. Scenery, something beautiful to look at, a candle or, as we talked about last time, a video of a candle flame, a photo, even a photo on your phone is fantastic. Um, a scene of the park, if it works for you, your bookshelf, something to look at, just something to focus your attention or a plant or a flower. OK, a little aside there, I'm going to share with you from Positive Therapy that we know that the landscape and the scenery that makes us feel happiest and, and most relaxed is what you might call a savanna landscape where you've got trees and glimpses of the sky through the trees. And if there's some water in the distance, that's even better. And that's the sort of landscape that makes us all feel that little bit more relaxed. OK. So there we are, visual sense. We're working on our visual sense, thinking, focusing on pictures. So whether it's a flower or a spring landscape or a pond or a bubbling fountain or just a wall in a quiet room. And then we're starting with visual. But as we do more of these mindful moments, we're building up that multisensory processing. OK. I like you to see my while we go through these, but it, it does cover up the the writing a little. Chosen roses, because I think they're good to think about multisensory. There's the colour, the shape of the flower, the scent, the perfume, the texture, the satiny petals, the leaf. The thorns um, and the growth, they change day by day. Here, um, I looked out of the window and there's a whole rose um, shoot just seems to be covering up the bottom of the window that just wasn't there two weeks ago. And there you are. That's one of our roses here. Um, any rose will fine. 
any flower is fine. And again, just to show you, it doesn't have to be the flower. There's a leaf, a rose leaf in the rain, and that's that's a good one to focus on. So let me just go back a little bit. So what you're doing, and I suggest is looking at one of these on YouTube or or, or doing a search, is you're just watching. You notice the candle flame. You notice the picture of the rose with the glistening raindrops gathered on the leaf. And for a minute or two, it can take longer, but for most of us, a minute or two is all that we have. You can actually then just look, gaze, switch off and refresh your thinking. Object gaze, meditation. And I thought, why not? Let's do simpli simplicity and silliness. If you can find or make some bubble mixture, um, bubble stuff, as my mum used to call it, and open up your bubble bottle and remove the wand. Take a deep breath and hold it for a moment. Breathe out slowly through the bubble wand, blow out your bubble and pay attention to your breath and the number of bubbles that you create. And imagine those bubbles as stressors that float away and then do it again. Um, why not? It's a brilliant activity, um, especially if you can make your own bubble mixture. And calming bubbles, helping to manage anxiety. And without realizing it, you're controlling your breathing out, your exhalation, So blowing bubbles is great for slowing down and lengthening your outgoing breath. And so it's actually a route to regulating our nervous system. Um, those of you that know about polyvagal theory and, and, and regulating that, that, that brain that wants to go off and fight a saber toothed tiger, why not blow bubbles and our emotional reactivity? So I'm going to say it's a great way of relieving stress and tension. Let's reclaim calming bubbles and blowing bubbles. So let your bubbles, sorry, let your thoughts float away like little bubbles. I could go even further into the game that I always used to play and still play with children where I would be popping the bubbles. So you're letting your thoughts float away and as they float away, pop, 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 they're gone. Those worries have gone. Brilliant activity. OK. Ah. So here's your savannah landscape. Trees, gaps, sky and water. And there's another one. If you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling as though your attention is shredded, even if you can't, imagine that you're surrounding yourself with space, that feeling of space. Um, I do it in a queue at the airport when I'm standing at the airport and I really do not like being in the airport. And I will stand in that great long queue and that's where I'm, I, I practice mindfulness because it's one of the most challenging places. I can't easily do it if I'm on my own, but I do try to just think, actually, I've got space around me. I'm OK. And that feeling of space, that feeling of being surrounded by space. And we talked last time about putting mini spaces between different activities during the day. I'm going to say as well, as we we will be doing another of these on auditory and music is that difference between silence and music silence and music i'm thinking about art galleries and how they put their beautiful paintings on display but they surround them by space there's something around a feeling of space and there we go you know, there's the word space, surrounded by space, and we, we focus on one thing then. Uh, that, that's quite a nice technique. There we are. Imagine space, your space. 
and space in your thinking. So you might be in the busiest room, um, the busiest bus, the busiest train, the busiest queue somewhere. But imagine that space, space in your thinking, space around you. I, I have been doing it for a few years now and I've got better at it. It works for me. And it's almost like a very, very quick break. So there we are, reflective breaks. so you can see that whatever you're doing it's breaking your thinking out of the loop and if we do that and break our thinking we're more likely then to be able to pay attention and concentrate and focus so today is all about in those moments where we feel frazzled can't concentrate we might feel a little anxious. We might not all feel anxious, but some of us might. It's how we break out of that loop. There we are. Landscape with space. OK. And. Thinking of your place, your retreat, your refuge from. Busyness from being frazzled and it's that picture of a place and imagining yourself. It's that that place that you go when you, you don't want to feel quite so frazzled. And I'll share it's a holiday that we stumbled across many, many years ago. It isn't somewhere I ever expected to be. And when somebody says to me, oh, imagine somewhere um, that's very beautiful. Um, for many years, this was my place that I would go to um, a place somewhere in the middle of Italy with a herb garden, of course, and down the road, um, a secret place, a swimming place. There's a waterfall with a beautiful pool. So that's a great image to have in your head. If you want that space and you want to feel relaxed is finding something like this to just imagine in your thoughts. OK. Um, certainly put too much in today i'm sharing far too many ideas but let's just switch off you've been doing some work now on um fixed object gazing um time for a snack time for some blueberries time for some apple slices whatever you have um and eating in slow motion and that's another great way of just 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 resetting things is to to choose something like a raisin or a blueberry and eat it very, very slowly in slow motion. We're not going to go through the whole um, mindfulness meditation on that today. I might another time, but just eating in slow motion and noticing the flavour, noticing the texture, noticing the smell. Um, and that helps. Um, often I do that with an apple. And between clients, between sessions, I'll go and um, um, mindfully eat an apple. OK. I promised we'd do something on reactivity. So there we are. There's the red mist rising. Something's happened and it's triggered that red mist in your thinking. Um, a response to something that you've heard or something that you've read in an email. And it's about increasing your self-awareness and knowing that you're reacting. That's the first step. Oh, I'm doing it again. I can feel it happening. I'm reacting. And you're probably reacting in a way that you'd rather not. So it's that key, the first step, to being able to choose to react differently and breaking our pattern of response. There we go. Um, and living with that very quiet, still mind. So we're back to space again and imagining that space around us. A mind that's still, still being an ever present theme in, in relaxation, tranquility, finding that stillness um, and breaking off from thoughts creates that spaciousness. Roominess is quite a nice word there, where your mind can rest. And for those of you that are quite imaginative, think of it as your own oasis, a very spacious, quiet mind, and you've got your own oasis that you can go to when you need to. And in the moment, slow it down. 
take time. If you're with somebody and you're in interaction, in an interaction with somebody, take that time to mentally step away from it. Think about your breathing and breathing slowly and intentionally. If you can walk away from it, but that's not always possible. But giving yourself time out, imagine that place, your oasis. Um, you know, you can still look as if you're paying somebody attention, but your thoughts can be somewhere else. And you're giving your body and your mind, that whole system, a chance to 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 almost like an inoculation with tranquility and bring down your stress hormone, those cortisol levels. There we are. There we are. And, you know, it only takes a moment. Um, one minute of mindfulness meditation, breaking off your thoughts, whatever you want to call it, can be surprisingly effective, especially when we do it consistently. My airport cue um, mindfulness has certainly improved over the years. Um, longer sessions certainly have their benefits, but a one minute can give you that quick mental reset and reduce your stress, that feeling of stress. OK, and what would you do in your one minute? Well, you could imagine that candle flame. You could go to your oasis. You could imagine a beautiful place. It's good to have somewhere, something that you're going to bring out at those points. Or you could do a very quick body scan. OK, I'm here. OK, my hands are OK. I'm going to imagine they're feeling a little bit heavy. I'm going to drop them down by my side. And my feet are on the ground. And they're very firmly on the ground. And I'm rooted there firmly on the ground. And I'm feeling quite heavy in my feet. That's OK. And I'm doing everything in slow motion. And you there talking to me can be as grumpy as you want to be. But I'm OK. I'm dealing with it in my own way. There we are. So focusing on a candle for just a minute, and I've put a link. There are many of these um, on YouTube and, and elsewhere. So, so there's one candle meditation that you can go to. And here again, a different micro meditation body scan. Um, going through your body, Noticing any signs of tension, invariably mine's here, so I need to relax that. Um, I need to make sure that my jaw here isn't clenched. Sometimes my teeth might clench together and I need to do something about that. And then after I've done that, go back through it again. This time thinking about where you're relaxed. So, oh, my forehead's relaxed. Or I'm actually feeling OK. My feet are quite relaxed. My toes, my big toes quite relaxed. And after you go through where I feel tight and stretched and tense, go through where you feel relaxed. That just moves it on a little bit and you only need 30 seconds. So it's a minute. So there we go. It's my image today of everything draining away. It's those moments when you feel that things are draining away. Again, replenishing our energy and that feeling tired is a natural part of life. But when we're exhausted, there are some things that we can do. Sometimes we're exhausted and we have to keep going. There's nothing else that we can do. So what do we do? Oops. Lower your expectations. Be kind to yourself. You're not going to be super productive if you're very tired. We're going to have to accept that. You might just want to curl up on the settee, stream a movie, read a book, and it's accepting that that's your current capacity. Of course, if you're in the middle of a session with a client or you're in the middle of, of, of working you know, in a process, you've really just got to work out how you can um, replenish your energy in that moment. Um, one thing to reflect on is what is your relationship with fatigue and making a list of, of the causes that make you feel more tired in life. 
um, and what's true right now. Am I fatigued or am I experiencing strain at this point in time? And recognising when your batteries are on low. Um, notice that you feel tired, that your capacity is lower than normal. You're not as sharp, maybe not as good um, at something as we usually are. Um, and bring awareness to that. It's self-compassion. You've got to be aware that that's how it is. Um, we're doing something about it, but you feel very tired. And here's some advice for somebody that I found. I'm not even sure I can credit this, but it was very useful advice. Aim for small victories. It might just be answering a couple of emails. You might not write a blog post, but you might be able to write a paragraph. Um, do what you can if you've got to keep going. And there is evidence that mindfulness based interventions can help people to recover from the mental fatigue. And mental fatigue being a state caused by a prolonged period of demanding cognitive activity. We've overthought, we, we've, we, we've thought too much, okay? And it's building up your tools to deal with that fatigue. And Jean Kabat-Zinn, who developed the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Programme, here's a quote from him, is the real meditation is how you live your life. And I would absolutely say that for me, it's never, I'm going, I, I'd never am one of those people who can do mindfulness meditation and find a cushion and sit out for 20 minutes. I've tried, I've really tried very hard at that. Um, I'm too distractible. I'm somebody who's much more likely to be able to permeate my whole day with mini meditations, micro meditations. OK, for anybody who's particularly interested, those are the inspirational sources that I have chosen that we've worked on today. Um, Mindful Woman, Gentle Practices for Restoring Calm, and that's equally great for mindful everybody. Mindfulness for Busy People, Turning Frantic and Frazzled into Calm and Composed and the One Minute Meditator, which is a small paperback book that I've had for a number of years. So there we are. I think that's got us to the end. I shall stop screen sharing so that you can see me again. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. It's turned into more of a longer background session than I expected. I've given you far more than, than I planned on today. So I hope if you've needed to, you've watched it in several doses rather than watch the whole video at once. But you're there and um, I hope it's helpful. Find something, the image that works for you, that picture, that, that oasis. And the other thing to take away is it might not be spacious around you, but imagine it in your head. And that that really can work if we do it more and more. So that's me. Um, another mindful moment, another dose of positive therapy from the frugal French homestead and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.